evening to everyone in India and good morning to others, etc. Uh, I understand that uh, this is the 267th session. I had occasion to show my face uh, in this uh, series of in this series off and on, but uh, it was all uh, the last one was uh, two three months back if I remember correct. Now the subject is how to take forward uh, the science of homeopathy. I am a layman in the field and do, do not expect any uh, scientific input from me. My contribution will be based on my limited personal experience and also from whatever I could gather from the net. Dr. Shaji is uh, very optimistic, but uh, my understanding of uh, our position is not that bright. I'll give the reasons. First of all, homeopathy has not uh, passed its childhood in the sense that it is hardly two centuries old. Many countries, out of uh, 195 countries, it's only in the 42 countries or so that it is recognized. And uh, in about, uh, say, uh, 80 countries, it is being used. But uh, major countries like uh, United Kingdom, Australia, European countries, Switzerland, France, Austria, and uh, very many countries do not support this system. It was Hitler's Germany that uh, actually and uh, actively contributed to the growth of homeopathy. In uh, India, as you know, homeopathic treatment was allowed as a prophylactic treatment, as a preventive treatment, but not as a curative uh, system. And everyone was uh, unhappy with this attitude of the government. But then, a democratic government will be depending upon the inputs, the expression of desire of the public at large. If any government, any democratic government is to act, it has to get strong inputs from the people, devotees. In that regard, I'm not uh, very sure that uh, homeopathy has established its roots among the people sufficiently well. If homeopathy is to grow, this attitude of the people has to change. How attitude of people will change we know for very many items of diseases, homeopathy is superior to allopathy, my own personal experience. And uh, even in the present COVID scenario, in my residence association, almost everyone took to uh, prophylactic treatment from homeopathy. Your supply free. I think I had at least three courses by now. I'm also vaccinated under the allopathic system. Both, both the jabs were received more than a month ago. So far, uh, I am saved. But then, in spite of the prophylactic treatment, preventive treatment, there have been very many deaths, very many people affected by COVID in my own residential area. In my last session, I had I was more optimistic about uh, the role of homeopathy as a preventive measure for COVID. 
But today I am not so. And uh, probably you may know, you may be aware that as on this day, your own Director General is receiving allopathic treatment for COVID. So this is the situation. We have to convince people that the homeopathy system is effective. How that can be done? Probably practitioners will know better. But then my own suggestion will be that uh, at least in the two, two, two ways we can try. One is to popularize homeopathy by organizing medical camps, free medical camps, where uh, uh, resident associations can play a major role. We can visit the residents' associations one by one, find out their diseases, prescribe medicines. Not only prescribing medicines, you should be getting inputs, monitor them, monitor how they progress. And gradually, one by one, people will be convinced. The second will be to conduct academic studies. They, in a particular residence associations, how many people got prophylactic treatment? How many were affected? How many died? How many are in serious condition? And after the treatment, once you turn negative, what are the negative affectations you have had? Are they permanent? How the, the, those conditions can be further treated and cured? Like that, studies can be conducted. And if you can, if we can convince the government of India that uh, I already told you in my own experience, it was not very effective here, but then it need not be so in all other places. Each uh, group of say 100 house households can be studied where uh, how many of them were given prophylactic treatment and uh, how many doses at what uh, intervals they took it and uh, how many of them got affected by COVID subsequently, how many got cured, etc. Et so this sort of uh, Empirical data, if you can produce before the government and if it is cross verified and found to be correct, probably the government will be convinced. Otherwise, this fear, especially when any, any government will be out of this uh, committee of nations numbering 195, every country will be looking into the experience of other countries also or something like our peer review. They will be in consultation. See what happened in, uh, what is the attitude of Australia? What is the position in Austria? What is the, the, what is the attitude of uh, European countries? UK, is it uh, going uh, further uh, downwards or upwards? So these inputs will be another factor which may influence the government of India. So, it is a, you cannot have a leap forward all of a sudden. As I told you, after all, it is only 200 centuries old, not a, a big period for the growth of a new branch of science. So, my uh, humble statement will be that uh, each practitioner can put, some, put in some uh, inputs, some efforts, so that through camps and uh, other free services, etc., homeopathy can be put into their minds as a system of treatment which can be confidently gone into. And uh, everyone knows that it is cheap. When compared to other systems, it is cheap. But cheapness alone will not matter. Even costly treatment people will be inclined to take, provided they are convinced that 
that will be substantially better for their um, health conditions. So, my 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 statement, my advice will be that practitioners can start building up confidence of the people in this, in this system. Secondly, your organization can make studies once the, the lockdown is withdrawn and uh, as expected, the condition of the people improve substantially. Then it's the time when you can start studies, find out where you are and uh, only thereafter, the government of India will be persuaded as far as uh, I understand. And uh, as you know, efforts for bringing in a guideline with regard to good clinical practices and uh, with regard to research in homeopathy, a guideline is being drafted. I will say only being drafted because just, uh, the draft came out actually about a year back, but then I think it still remains a draft. In fact, even today, I inquired as to what happens to the draft, why it is not going up. So then only that I understand that the director general himself is uh, a COVID patient, laid up under treatment, etc., etc. So probably uh, astrologically also, it's not a good time for homeopathy, but it need not be so tomorrow for various reasons. Uh, no headway could be made in the matter of bringing in homeopathy as an effective uh, system of treatment for a pandemic like COVID, though it remains and it has been a very good uh, healing mechanism for very many other diseases, where even <clears throat> allopathy fails, where uh, even uh, Ayurveda fails, homeo has its slots. But uniformly for all diseases, whether it can be made an alternative is a matter yet to be studied. So it's all that I can say for the evening. Probably you. in the course of discussion, some other questions may come. I'll remain with you for some more time. Let us see. So thank you, Dr. Shaji, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your comments and openness. And uh, one more thing for your information is uh, Dr. Uh, Anil Gurana, doctor, is uh, admitted to a, ho a, a hospital where homeopathy sec section is well established there in that hospital. Uh, it is uh, one of, of the Secretary General of uh, Asian Homeopathic Medical League, former Secretary General, Dr. A.K. is even the secretary of that hospital also. So there is a well established homeopathy wing there in Gangaram Hospital. So that is also available to our, our Director General. And also bring to your attention that even the president of Indian Medical Association, former president, after taking two doses of vaccine, died with the homeo with oh. the COVID nineteen th after three months of time. So oh. there is a there is a big problem exists, and the homeopathy is emerging as the best solution is the undoubted thing. But the opportunity is not given to homeopathy. Homeopathy is every day suppressed. We need to go to High Court and Supreme Court to get our rights established. And because of technical reasons, we are not even allowed to use the name COVID. It's another technical problem. But we are allowed to treat COVID-like symptoms because of our unique way of treatment. So we are being sidelined and restricted in every way. I appreciate you to understand all these things. With all these restrictions, people are demanding homeopathy is the situation today. This even this organization is formed by the inspiration and motivation and uh, um, uh, over excitement of homeopathy lovers than doctors. So these many of the participants of this forum is homeopathy lovers than doctors. 
people like me are passionate about homeopathy and uh, but uh, this forum is formed out of homeopathy lovers is the truth now we will come to the discussion session now we will invite another uh, panelist uh, dr ashen um uh, from uh, uh, from sri lanka who is the president of um, uh, president of sri lankan homeopathic medical council dr ashen tilaga dunagara is here please uh, open your video doctor so that i can um, see you dr ashan please open your video to pin you hello yeah where are you doctor you open your video doctor yeah yeah already done please open your video <clears throat> yeah already open okay yeah So, Dr. Ashen is the president of the Sri Lankan Homeopathic Medical Council, a young dynamic homeopathic doctor from Sri Lanka, uh, who graduated from Bachelor of Homeopathic Medicine and Surgery from the prestigious National Institute of Homeopathy from Calcutta, India, and currently the chairman of Sri Lanka Homeopathic Medical Council. A well-known homeopathy doctor in Sri Lankan homeopathic medical field, he is the founder of Healthcare Homeopathy Clinics. a hugely popular homeopathic treatment centers which is having a chain of clinics in sri lanka over to you dr ashan the team is your for 10 minutes to give your perspective of uh, uh, what is to be done to bring homeopathy the number one medicine in the world okay uh, good evening everyone uh, thank you dr saji kuria for inviting me for this uh, 26 267 session of i I uh, I F P H. Hello, are you getting? Yeah, yes, you are here audible. You are audible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so today topic is. So today topic is, uh, what what need to be done to make homeopathy number one medicine in the world. So uh, for this, I think uh, first of all we have to uh, like we have to do, uh, we have to be together as a homeopathy practitioners. as far as my view uh, we are scattered uh, still so uh, first we have to do is we have to be together we have to uh, make a one path so then only we can go forward go forward and uh, uh, make homeopathy in number one in the world so uh, and also i i i my point is uh, we uh, we are always talking among us like we are always talking in the in between homeopathy doctors and those who are know the homeopathy uh, we are we are always we are discussing we are heavily discussions and we are talking about homeopathy but there is not enough for the uh, population of homeopathy so we have to go go to the uh, out of border like uh, we have to go to the other population we have to reach them then only uh, we can we can make a homeopathy uh, in the first medicine in the world so for that uh, i think uh, awareness program is the best way to reach other population uh, as i think the first we have to go to the schools because school uh, young generation they must understand what is homeopathy they should know homeopathy uh, then uh, they they can they can understand homeopathy well so uh, if we can educate them if we can educate the young, young generation uh, then we can make homeopathy popular so first of all we have to make a plan for that so we have to go to the schools we can make a school teachers of first we can make understand school teachers so uh, if they know about homeopathy if they believe homeopathy they will make them un- make understand that they are students so they will give students the right path they can they can uh, make understand students so then then the students they will start to taking homeopathy then they will know how homeopathy will work and they will gain 
benefits of homeopathy so uh, by this we can catch next generation so if we catch the next generation uh, the homeopathy will reach to other population uh, as well as that is school children so we can go to the university students so many of university students they don't know about homeopathy and they don't have any idea about homeopathy so if we can go to the uh, university students if we can reach unity students so uh, we we can make them understand what is homeopathy what are the benefits of homeopathy how we can treat and what kind of diseases we can cure uh, what what kind of uh, diseases we can uh, we can like we can prevent uh, then we can we we will make them understand what uh, what is the homeopathy and uh, what can we what can we can, what we can gain from homeopathy so the uh, university student if they understand homeopathy if they start to believe homeopathy Mm. They, they will make homeopathy popular so they will tell their parents huh? then they will after after a few years they will become a fathers they will become a mother so they will tell their children to take homeopathy this is the homeopathy and homeopathy will uh, cure you huh? they will take their children so by this we can catch the next generation so Uh, make homeopathy popular and make homeopathy uh, medicine number one in the world. So I think we have to first we have to uh, catch the next generation. So um, my opinion is uh, we have to go to the schools, we have to go to the university universities, and uh, as well as universities, we have to go to the coaching classes. They are the most important things um, because now uh, nowadays all students are taking coachings. so if you go to the coaching classes and uh, we can make understand coaching classes teachers so they will tell the uh, students this is a homeopathy you can take homeopathy treatment so you can gain this is benefit so by this we can get we can catch the next generation so if we catch the next generation after few years homeopathy will be the first medicine in the world that is much better and also uh, one more thing is there we have to understand one thing what we can do and what we can't because uh, we we can we have seen somewhere like some doctors are telling uh, they are taking all the patients uh, they they don't know whether they can cure or whether they can't cure but they are giving medicine and they will tell uh, things like i will cure you but there are some some diseases what we can't cure hmm? because some some diseases are there we have to do surgery and if they understand that hmm, we have we can refer them to surgery hmm? why, why we are holding something like we can't do first we have to understand is we have we can we have to understand what we can do and what we can't so if we can filter what we can so then we can gain the homeopathy otherwise uh, that population they will they some uh, they will they will not believe homeopathy if we can't cure so uh, as a homeopathy doctor we must understand what we can and what we can't uh, then also um, if we go to the again awareness program uh, next awareness program is best thing is we have to go to the religious places because uh, religious places i mean like temple church uh, most they are the uh, leaders of population so if we go to the uh, that religious places if we can make them understand that uh, like those who are in the uh, temples church or most if they start believe homeopathy they will tell their followers go to the homeopathy doctors take homeopathy treatment they will cure you the uh, second thing and uh, if they are they start to believe they will guide population they will guide other, their followers to homeopathy so everyone will go to the homeopathy uh, they will understand what homeopathy can cure and benefits of homeopathy they can get benefits homeopathy 
and also one more thing is there we can go to the politicians because uh, politicians and politicians are the uh, control of our population so they are the leaders so if we can go to the uh, politicians if we can make them understand what is homeopathy what we can do by homeopathy then if they when they start believe homeopathy those who, who follow them they will guide to homeopathy take homeopathy by this uh, we can we can make the population understand what we can do what are the homeopathy medicines what to homeopathy medicine can do and uh, also uh, next thing is we can go to the some factories like uh, there are some huge factories uh, some population like some people are working there like uh, 3000 5000 people are there so if we can go to that factories and we can uh, held a medical free medical camp and awareness program by this we can uh, make them understand uh, that home what we can do homeopathy and what are the benefits of homeopathy then they will understand uh, how homeopathy works work. by this mm, we can make homeopathy number one so uh, my idea is awareness program is the best way to reach population and make homeopathy number one medicine in the world and uh, last thing is nowadays uh, i'm just informing you like nowadays we are uh, this, we are having discussion with government to treat covid 19 patient by homeopathy uh, uh, so uh, in sri lankan uh, home, some homeopathy doctors are they are, they are still uh, ready to volunteer volunteer practice so uh, i'm 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 much, much glad to them because they are ready to work in, uh, to treat COVID-19 patients volunteering. So nowadays we are having discussion with uh, government. I think uh, one or two weeks we can we can get the permission to treat homeopathy, uh, treat COVID-19 patient by homeopathy. Uh, so by this, I think uh, we can make homeopathic medicine uh, number one in the world. Uh, and uh, lastly, uh, thanks Dr. Hajit Kudia uh, giving me opportunity and thanks everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Ashan Pilanka Dunagara, the, the chairman of the Sri Lankan Medical Homeopathic Medical Council, to come and appear as a panelist in our, our session with a very short notice. Thank you for your session and paneling. And uh, we, Dr. Ashan, informed about uh, the need to create awareness about uh, among the students, university school students, university students, and go to uh, uh, politicians, religious leaders, and teachers, uh, and factories for public awareness. That is very nice information. And also another important thing mentioned by Dr. Ashin is know our limitations also, so that we will be properly communicating with the patients so that nobody will be wrongly affected by uh, whatever happened. So these are very important points. So thank you, Dr. Ashton. Now I invite uh, Dr. Palaksha from UK, um, uh, who is a young dynamic uh, person and um, who is an experienced homeopathy practitioner. She has done her master's in homeopathy pediatrics pediatrics and uh, she has established a private practice in India and uh, uh, in London by name Kalp Homeopathy Clinic uh, and she has uh, helped uh, treat many patients with acute and chronic ailments with the help of homeopathy. She is a lecturer at the Northwest School of Homeopathy at the Stockport, United Kingdom. She was uh, also a lecturer at South Down School of Homeopathy, Chichester, uh, UK. Uh, she has presented various topics nationally and internationally. She, ha she is actively involved with a few wellness groups to create uh, health awareness in community. Uh, currently, she is involved in treatment of COVID cases. Also, she is contributing to uh, Cliffy Call, which is the clinical data collecting portal of Homeopathic Research Institute in UK. So thank you. With this, I introduce uh, Dr. Palaksha, uh, please come in. Please come in. Yes. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hi. 
good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everyone. Uh, 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 so I'm here actually to talk about the topic which is very, very close to my heart. Uh, having lived in two different countries uh, in India, and, and in UK now, uh, and I have been practiced in both the countries. The scenario is so, so different in both the countries when it comes to homeopathy. Uh, in India, uh, when I used to practice there, it is, you know, the acceptance is very high. The government support is good. So, uh, which is, which is, and also we have the best of education uh, and which is very standardized in homeopathy. Uh, but when it comes to UK, the scenario is not uh, very similar. Uh, what I really believe is uh, there needs to be a change in the paradigm. Uh, the way uh, uh, homeopathy is, uh, is, uh, is, is actually seen as uh, as a in in UK, it's not even it's far from considered as also uh, a lead, legit system of medicine. So it's not even considered as a legit system of medicine. So it's that poor scenario here. Uh, but uh, uh, but I really am really as a passionate homeopath and a strong believer and supporter of homeopath. I'm a big critic also. So what my view. Uh, is uh, what changes that we need to bring about uh, to establish homeopathy as, as number one system of medicine or, and also uh, to help achieve homeopathy as, as a, uh, to you know, uh, achieve its true potential that we all have learned and we all have seen during this pandemic that how, how homeopathy can help uh, where even the, uh, the conventional medicine is not able to help. So uh, this needs to reach to a larger population. Uh, so more and more homeopath uh, as a community, we must come together and uh, uh, share our experiences. Uh, so even if you're just a practitioner, just uh, support, uh, uh, support the researchers, uh, contribute towards clinical research, uh, present your papers. Uh, I really believe that the research should be part of the education system in homeopathy uh, so that the students can learn from when, when while they are under training uh, uh, that the research is important part of homeopathy. If we do not uh, contribute enough towards research and do not participate enough towards research, we do not establish ourselves as a scientific system of medicine, which uh, Homeopathy is, we all know that is science and art. Okay. But then it's science first. We need to establish ourselves as a scientific evidence based system of medicine. Uh, if we have to have that global recognition, we must establish. And it is, it is a very scientific method uh, of treatment, but it just, we need to establish ourselves. We need to conduct ourselves uh, in a way that, uh, that, if, that all the government also supports us uh, and other fatern medical fraternity, other conventional, other Ayurveda, everybody uh, supports each other so that we, uh, uh, so, so that we establish ourselves as a more scientific system of medicine. Uh, I believe that the chain begins at like, you know, if we, if you have to uh, bring about the global change, we must change our own system, our own community. Uh, so, uh, we should have more standardized education uh, worldwide. Uh, we should have more scientific approach towards taking up any cases, be it cases of like simple sinusitis or uh, or more complex uh, cases like chronic renal failure, anything. We must have a clinical approach. We must understand the importance of investigation, examination, everything thoroughly. So while taking case, you know, so we then we know that we are not just the simple practitioner we are also doctors you know who understand and can manage the even the complexity of the cases right and also now when it comes to the art part of homeopathy you know just understanding the core of the patient understanding the characteristics so the education is should be very very standardized uh, second thing uh, we community as a community we should uh, come together support each homeopath and and practice a one uh, 
uh, I know we have a lot of different ways of practicing homeopathy. So uh, if we standardize a, a way of practicing homeopathy, uh, we do, uh, we are able to recreate what is science, you know, now we are able to recreate the long lasting cure that we uh, can deliver every single time that similar long lasting cure to each and every patient by each and every homeopath. You know, the way the day we achieve that kind of a uh, cure, uh, the, the, the day we achieve that kind of a dependability, we will be recognized as a more scientific uh, system of medicine. Uh, we must create the awareness and come forward for research. Uh, uh, so then we have uh, the other medical fraternity also values us. And... Uh, uh, and, the, and for the social uh, awareness, as other uh, Dr. Ashan said, we must uh, understand our limitation scope and also create okay. awareness in the population, uh, so that uh, uh, so that we know that we can explain our patients how homeopathy works. The understanding of of holistic importance of holistic approach in today's time is so important, uh, and. Uh, making patient aware uh, 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 about, about how the materialistic concept and how dynamic concept uh, of hom homeopathy is, like how it is different from a materialistic concept of disease and cure both. And uh, uh, it just creating awareness, education will help us achieve uh, the number one step in system of medicine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.